Thank you very much, Mr. MC Johnny. Um, honorable guests, the 2017 judges, all the brilliant participants, ladies and gentlemen, it is truly an honor for me to be part of this prestigious evening as the global head and matron of the 2017 Charter Quest CFO case study competition. I am truly proud to be associated with Charter Quest and this global competition. For me, tonight is more than a celebration of the winners of the competition. Tonight is indeed a celebration of our future leaders of the financial industry. Ethical financial leaders. Leaders who will determine the sound direction of corporations, of industry, the government, the government sector, and then by implication of their respective countries. Leaders who will act and should act as gatekeepers of the ethical values of the economy of our country and of all the other countries which are presented here tonight. The development of young persons has always been a great passion of mine. The realization that I could make a, different, a difference in some individuals' lives has indeed changed my career goals and focus many, many years ago. And being associated with this competition, Mr. T, is thus closely aligned to my own vision and passion. Being a professional accountant and part of a dynamic institution shaping the futures of young people. The CFO case study competition signifies a full rounded prepara pre preparation of our future corporate leaders. In higher education, we know that equipping our students with state of the art and relevant knowledge is not sufficient. Our young people need to be prepared to make decisions, ethical decisions in split seconds, and I saw that over these past two days. Decisions that will not only impact on the immediate profit of industries, but decisions that will secure the long-term sustainability of industries, and sometimes even of countries. This competition clearly shares our mindset transition from the what you know education to what you can do mindset. 
This approach is also in line, ladies and gentlemen, with the most recent research on learning for professional practice. A study by, done by two Australian scholars, Dal Alba and Barnacle, just recently confirms that, and I quote them, educational programs that seek to develop know-how as integrative performance would encourage willingness amongst in individuals and professions to interrogate discordance in the interest of improving practice. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we want our future financial leaders to actively challenge inherited assumptions and to rethink routine or established practice. We want them to ask, is it good? Is it appropriate? Is it the right thing to do? These questions, ladies and gentlemen, relate directly to the core competence of future financial leaders of industry, ethical decision making. We are all aware of the embarrassing corporate collapses in many countries and the recent corporate embarrassments also here in South Africa, resulting, I believe, from poor ethical judgment by our financial decision makers. A study on the impact of an, of an ethical framework and integrated ethics education on accounting students' ethical sensitivity in 2015 confirmed that stand-alone ethics education is also not really sufficient. However, the integration of ethics in education with the core competencies of professional education does make a difference. This is exactly what a competition such as this one achieves. Integrated ethical decision making. I saw that today in many of the questions that were posed by the panels to our young children and our students. This is done by utilizing in-depth questioning and evaluation of both data and other sources of information. Not only are students required to track data patterns, assess information as a process instead of simply memorizing it, but they constantly have to assess the appropriateness and integrity of their decisions. That is what happened during these two days. I am therefore really impressed with what I have experienced of and learned about the CFO case study competition. This competition is a seamless extension of pedagogical principles, namely the integration of knowing, acting, and being a professional. It indeed emphasizes the importance of integrated performance. Within a constantly changing environment, with new challenges facing financial professionals on a daily basis, we expect from future CFOs and financial professionals to integrate their know what and their know how and invent sound and ethical solutions for new challenges every day. I believe that this competition encourages this ability. Warren Buffett, the, the legendary American business magnate, once said, in looking for people to hire, you look for three qualities, integrity, intelligence, and energy. And if they don't have the first, the other two will kill you. Participants in this competition, I believe that Warren Buffett will be glad to hire any one of you today. There is currently, and I believe will always be, a huge demand for ethical accounting and financial profession, professionals within the academia, the public sector, and business at large. An important incentive for our young youngsters of, is, of course, always the prospect of a good salary. CFOs are amongst the highest income earners in today's world of work. However, this should never be your sole focus. 
Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is indeed a celebration of our future ethical leaders of industry. I'm excited about these leaders. I'm looking forward to observing them making sound ethical decisions that will direct their companies and countries indeed towards a sustainable future of financial performance, sustainability and excellence. Future leaders of industry, I want to leave you with the words of an exceptional woman, Oprah Winfrey, who once said, and I quote her, Real integrity is doing the right thing, knowing that nobody is going to know whether you did it or not. Thank you very much. Thank you. gentlemen. Hello, good evening. Uh, may I extend my heartfelt uh, gratitude to my uh, VIPs who took the time off their hectic schedule to come and celebrate this day with us. May I extend my greetings? All right, I, and to all of you who have made the time as well to come and see us today. Competition is the order of the day. We see the shackles of competition every single day. Multinationals come to the continent. They do so well. Our companies need to rise up and compete at the highest level. If you think about it at the level of the aspirants, you will compete for scholarships. You will compete when you graduate from school. You will compete for jobs. You will compete for promotions. The world, it's commonly called a VUCA world. Very volatile, very complex. Things change very rapidly. So it's a, an increasingly competitive world. So we am, imagine a future where we build a business leader of the future that is able to withstand the rigors of competition. So once every year, as the Charter Quest Case Study Center we bring the world to South Africa and take South Africa to the world, really to benchmark and celebrate fit for purpose education. And by this, I'm talking about education that is very rigorous, education that is very, uh, it, it, it imbibes the, the principles of the culture, critical thinking, education that shifts from the textbook to one that really connects what happens in the classroom or the textbook to solving real world socioeconomic challenges, those challenges that global business leaders face on a day-to-day -day basis with the hope that uh, that education can produce leaders who understand beyond just what goes on in the textbook, who can identify problems, who can become entrepreneurs, who can build organizations from South Africa on the continent that can withstand the very best of competitions around the world. And I say this with a deep passion for, uh, for the country, South Africa, for the continent, but make no mistake, I'm a globalist. I, I look at things from a very global point of view. The world has become so integrated, like I pointed out before. So you want to be sure that the young people we produce, they can withstand competition, not just within their classrooms, not just within their provinces, not just within the country, but they can withstand competition continentally, internationally, and globally. They, they should be ready to deal with all the challenges that they will be faced when they become captains of industry. So really, this is what drives uh, us. So when we set out this case study center, we said, 
how can we use the case study method? An integrated case study method, to be precise. To intertwine what businesses are doing and what the academic system is doing and try and bring this and try and create a culture of excellence. It's been two years down the and last year we reported that so many different teams entered from five continents all over the world. Yes, it's true, 1,273. Five continents, 35 different universities. This year, it moved to 1,500. Five continents still, but this time 60 different universities. And when we sat here last time, we reported that we are not done. It doesn't end at the level of the universities. We are setting out to reimagine and change the education system right from the grassroots. And we promised you that was in 2016, that in 2017 we would introduce a second version of the competition to take this message of change, of applied thinking, critical thinking, so that we build the foundation that is necessary for our universities to then tap from there and build the leaders that we are looking for, for this country, for this continent, and at the global level. We're proud to report that one year on, we've managed to introduce that second version of the company. And this night, we will be celebrating the winners. Make no mistake, um, all those who have come through from the top 20, top six, top three, and eventually we'll be announcing the winning teams, they are winners. Really, like I pointed out last year, and I'll point it again, CFO Junior, I, I do hope that you have uh, learned a lot from the process. You can now better think about what you're doing with your careers. This year, it was a national competition. Next year, you will be competing against schools from across the continent. So we look forward to coming back here in the next one year to celebrate a bigger, better CFO Global, as well as a bigger and better CFO Junior. Africa. This is where the next generation of global business leaders will arise from. We entered the ChartaQuest Junior CFO case study competition with the hope of gaining valuable insights into the business world and to explore potential fields of study, allowing us to make informed decisions on future career paths. This competition bridges the gap between knowledge and real life application by exposing us to scenarios in which we first have to identify the problem before solving it. By forcing us to consider not only the financial implications of our decisions, but both the ethical and environmental impact simultaneously, we developed an ability to view our problems from an ultimate perspective. We were constantly challenged and pushed to new breaking points. The view on high school and believe that you can conquer the challenge. Form a team and enter now. From Cape to Cairo. From Dakar to Mogadishu. All roads lead to Johannesburg, South Africa. Take this opportunity to meet some of Africa's business leaders, as well as the chance to take home 50,000 Rand. We look forward to meeting you in 2018. Good, Good luck. luck. Log on to www.charterquest.co.za, click on the CFO and register today. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, um, Mr. T, for those kind words about um, about my organisation, the South African Qualifications uh, uh, Authority. 
When I thought about the brief statement that um, I'm about to make, I thought to myself, if I think about CFO, um, you know, what does it mean for me? And I was reminded of the first uh, time that I met with our founding CEO of um, SACWA, uh, Mr. Samuel Isaacs, and he told me a story about the CFO. He said that um, one day the CEO discovered that there was money that was being siphoned off. So he went to the CFO and he said to the CFO, I'm going to fire you. And um, the CFO said to him, look, I think you must consider very carefully whether you want to fire me or not. Because I already have got my holiday house, I've got my boat, and I've got all the things that you know I need. If you fire me now and you hire another CFO, you must remember you must get all of those things. <laughs> But I didn't think that that's the kind of CFO that Valentine has in mind. <laughs> and the chairperson, um, when she spoke, she was speaking about, and she used this big word, this E word, ethical. So when I think about the C in CFO, I think about clean, and I think about clean audits and so on. Because in South Africa, you know, we are striving to have clean orders both in the public sector as well as in the private sector. So clean stands for this idea of ethical um, leadership. And don't we need that so much in South Africa today? We need to have moral leadership. We need to have ethical leadership. As has been pointed out, that if one looks at the private sector, if we look at the KPMG issues, we look at ESCOM, I mean, you know, the CFO can motivate so that, uh, you know, six, was it something like uh, 685 or 87 million, you know, can go to one company. Um, we have got companies, in fact, that overspend with billions uh, as it was. So we, we actually need to have uh, ethical leadership. We need to have clean um, ethical behavior. And that is what the C in CFO stands for. Also, I think the C for me also stands for congratulating the person that has brought this vision uh, of this global competition uh, year, and that is Valentine. You know, he, wow, I tell you, the first time that I met him, you know, he, you know, he spoke about this idea of articulation and so on, and he really wanted to make sure, you know, that I'm on the right side. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you know, can we, can we trust what you are saying in these policy documents, you know? <laughs> So I want to really congratulate him, because one can have a vision, but the point about it is if you don't have an action plan and you don't put the resources behind it to actually make this work, then it will be like a train that stands at the station and never departs. It just stays there. So let us give him a round of applause. I also think it's important to congratulate the teams, the team from the university and the junior team for participating in this. Because you are winners by the mere fact that you've been participating in this uh, award. And then of course we also must say congratulations to the winners that will be announced a little bit later you are the first amongst equals for me. So let us give you a round of applause for being with us. When I think about the second uh, letter, which is the F, it stands for financial. What we know is a big discussion and debate happening in the world today. Is the CFO only about 
financial aspect? Shouldn't the CFO move from being a bean counter, you know, as the name goes, to being a value manager? So that the strategic role of the CFO is a very important thing. Um, and that wise decisions can be made in terms of investment, but also in terms of the business as a whole. You know, how does one move the business forward? And I think, you know, when Valentine was speaking earlier, he was talking about this idea that you, you know, that we would like, that CFOs can become global leaders. And it seems to me that uh, the kind of competencies that we are requiring from uh, CFOs these days is that, in fact, it is about being strategic more than anything else. And then when I think about the O, I think about this idea of an opportunity. Now, if we don't take the opportunity, then also, you know, the opportunity will go, will, will go by. And that, again, fits into the idea, um, you know, of the CFO as a strategic leader. But again, I want to say, it is quite important that the participants today also took the opportunity to apply to be part of this uh, competition, whether it's at, you know, whether it is in all of these continents where people come from, or whether it is people, you know, the school um, uh, learners that participate in the junior event. It is taking the opportunity. And I think that is what a lot of people are asking for, that they must be given the opportunity to take things forward. So, I would like to, again, wish everyone well, but also say that we need to support um, Wellington to take this idea and to make it bigger and to try to get you know, as many more schools to participate in this and also many more universities. So with that, then, I want to wish you well and I want to congratulate all of you and say that CFO for me stands for a clean, from finance to strategy, and to take the opportunity forward. Thank you very much.